Hello and welcome to Copay Sulphur. This is episode uh, 83. 83. <laughs> Heading towards that 100. And um, we're going to continue this evening with um, working on our Gatsby uh, JS portfolio site. Um, had a, a few hiccups last, last time, not as bad as the first stream on this in this series. So we managed to overcome the issues that we had um, early on in the last stream. And uh, we actually got a, a reasonable kind of basic page which shows our um, GitHub projects. So what I wanted to do this evening is well, the kind of aim of the, of the stream is to try and style that a bit nicer so it looks a bit more um, professional, just well the way I'd, I'd want to see it. And also to perhaps look at um, starting work on the uh, the blog page. Um, so uh, let's let's drop over into uh, the code and uh, and we'll have a look what we've got. Oh, here we are. So here's uh, we're in Visual Studio Code here. And this is the uh, projects uh, component, the Gatsby or React component we were, we were working on. And this is um, this is the one that brings back our um, GitHub uh, projects. So remember, Gatsby is a, a static website generator or a framework or library, whatever we want to call it. And so this is not a um, this is not a dynamic query that's happening um, on your on your uh, browser. This is something which uh, ha which is run uh, at build time, and uh, we are creating our little cards for the, our projects at that point, and then it's a static website thereafter. We're using um, a hook here, a React hook, uh, which is called a uh, static query to actually run our. Uh, our GraphQL query, which is uh, this piece of JSON here, and then we are um, we are using um, we are using um, uh, a, a map function here, our JavaScript map function, to iterate uh, basically through all of the uh, GitHub projects and to display them on a card, which is what this does. So that is uh, start up. Um, the project and we can go and have a look at it. So in order to get into um, development mode we just type Gatsby develop. And this is um, this kind of syntax is fairly common to a lot of these frameworks. Um, at work they have started using something called strappy which is a CMS and it also has kind of a strappy develop command. So what this is um, meant to do is to bring us in, uh, up a development server and also provide a kind of a hot reload uh, function but I have to admit, I haven't managed to get hot reload working, um, and I'm not quite sure why. There's a, um, and I will sort it out before the end of the, the series of streams. Uh, but um, yeah, it's not quite working, so I have to refresh. So that's uh, development servers now running. It's uh, built everything. So let's go and have a look at what we've got um, here. And refresh this page. Come on. What are you saying that for? P. That's why it's HTTPS. So there's our um, our Gatsby page. As you can see, we've got a, um, a header, we've got a footer at the bottom here, and then we've got these little cards which contain information about each of our um, GitHub um, repos and all the projects therein. So it's fairly basic. What we've got is a title. We've got a bit of text uh, from the uh, description in GitHub. Uh, we've got a link to the um, the repo and then we've got the number of stars and the number of forks but this is looking pretty bland um we want to kind of um smarten this up so it looks a bit a bit funkier really um so um i think the thing the first thing we can do is to have a look at this kind of card um layout now we're using um a a styling framework called bomantic ui which is a um a community fork of Semantic UI uh, and semantic UI is um, its kind of unique selling point really is that um, the class names we use are English words and so they um, that you can almost kind of guess the correct syntax for applying the styles uh, sometimes it catches you out but as you get more and more used to it you can, you can literally just write uh, almost an English phrase and it will um, it will actually um, nine times out of ten it will style as you expect it to let's go and have a look at that currently we've got three cards across and you can see that it, 
though it lines up nicely on this end with the, the header, we've got this menu at the top here, which doesn't do anything yet. It doesn't go anywhere. There's actually room for another card in there. Um, so, But the default is this three, three across on the grid. So let's go and have a look at what we can do about that. Um, so you can see here we've got um, we've got a div here, which is um, enclosing our um, our map function, which is basically going to apply this this styling within here, this card styling to each node in our uh, that comes back from our GraphQL. We've got it decorated here with a class name of UI, which is what we tend to use. Um, with um, semantic UI and then it's got cards uh, and that's really defining a container which contains um, several cards and um, what I've done here is uh, when, when I do the map I'm actually outputting um, the card a div with a card um, decoration there the card cl class name so what I'm going to do I'm going to say four cards I'm just going to write the word four and save and, and then See if that's going to actually put four cards across as I kind of really want. Let's refresh that, and it has. So you can see how kind of intuitive almost the um, the process of using semantic uh, UI is. I'm missing some some music. Let's have a bit of music going. A bit of relax daily. There we go. That's much better. Okay, so we've got now got four across. So um, I think we need to kind of do a bit of. Uh, sorting out of this it's a really boring layout really so this stars and forks I could do with that being um, towards the top and this forks we could do that floating across to the to the right so it's got stars this side and forks the other side so um, let's see if we can do that so we'll also move it up I think um, okay so Let's have a look. So here's here's the card that we're we're creating. Let's um let's see if we can float this across. So we say class name equals and then what we I will say um right floating. I don't know, right floating. And this one we can say class name. left floating and do a save on that and we'll see what happens with that that hasn't had any effect okay so I've also got my syntax not quite right so hmm okay so when it's not floating it's something else so let's go and have a look in our semantic UI and see if we can figure out what the correct syntax is so uh, so it's going to be, we can look in label I guess, so labels with pointers, tags, that will come in useful, I like those tags, we'll use those, um, you can position our floating labels, here we are, so what's this, it's got floating label, Floating UI label. So we haven't got a label. Okay. Let's try some other. Let's just try our float. This is, I quite like this idea that you can experiment and find out. That hasn't done any effect. Let's try, um, I don't know, what floated? Floated left floated right okay let's have another look oh well, that's done it this time look it's floated it so the word was floated which is a bit confusing as floating label was using the word floating but that was when you're floating top bottom left to right so okay well we'll short that down to experience okay so rather than the word stars and the word forks it would be nice there to have um, I think um, a, uh, an icon of some kind. I'm quite a bit in, into icons. I think that might be quite a nice idea. Let's have a look at what we can do with icons. So uh, I want to move this div 
into a different location. So where's the best place to put it, I wonder? Um, okay, I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it underneath the header. Let's grab hold of this div here. Delete that. Oops, I've deleted too many. Do, do. I just want the div. Let's move it under the header. And what we'll do is bring this across it. And we can give this a class as well. And let's go and have a look at what classes we can decorate cards with. I say decorate, I'm not really using the correct terminology, but that's kind of how I feel that we, we work with these these class names. Because it's, it, I'm, not a, I'm not a front end developer, so I'm not really into the idea of having to do the styles on a long hand in CSS, but this um, this framework that we're using for styling does seem to be um, yeah, I like this. Hmm. Hmm, not sure. Hmm. It's kind of extra content, isn't it? Um, let's call it extra content. And then this here we'll just call content, and we'll worry about that in a moment. Let's save that. Keep going back to having a look at what it looks like. It's now up there, which is where it, where it looks a lot better. But now we want to make icons here. Now, I believe we're going to have trouble finding a fork icon in the um, in the Font Awesome um, icon set. So I've actually uh, been out and found um, a graphic for fork. There's a branch icon I seem to remember in Font Awesome, but not a, a fork. So I have, do have that tucked away in my picture uh, directory, so we'll go and go with that in a moment, but let's, let's do the stars first. Cheers everybody. Okay. So, how do we get an icon in there? We don't want the word stars. What we want to do there is have an icon. So that's uh, an I. And we're going to want to have, um, let's think, oops, didn't want to do that. Um, and we want an icon which is kind of a class name. Oops. And we need to go and have a look at the font awesome fonts. Uh, font awesome icons that we can have. Let's go and have find icon which is here. But I'll make this a bit larger so you can see it. It's, it's a bit kind of small at the moment. There we go. So here's our icons and we want a star. Right, so we'll look, we should find a star. I seem to remember font awesome having a star. Oh, that's interesting. A project. Look at that. Oh, I like that. I oh, will come back to that. And we got tags as well. Look. Hmm. Okay. Um. These icons are really nice. I think we're going to go to town with icons on our page. Um. There's a lot of them, isn't there? I'm sure we'll find a star eventually. Hearts. Star, there we go, that's what we want. And let's go and have a look at the... ...code for that. Uh, 
Well, I think it's, it's just star. Star icon. Okay, fair enough. That's going to be star icon. Save that. That's nice. Well, let's make this a bit bigger as well so you can easier. There we go. So we've got a nice star with it. It's nicely spaced. Now we want um, the fork icon, but when there isn't a fork icon. I'm pretty sure there wasn't. Let's go have a quick look. I saw that there was a um, there was a branch icon, but not a fork. That's going to be in the coding section, I think. Code. Uh, you can see there's a branch, a code branch, but a fork is more like a kind of a Y shape rather than that that shape. So, as I say, I did go and get a um, an SGV file with a fork in it. So that's it here. Let's go and grab that, copy that, and we'll take put that over on our D drive. Um, we'll put it in our static directory. Paste it in there. So fork SVG. So that's a um, obviously scalable vector graphic. So it should be we should be able to um, use that quite nicely. So let's have a look in our code. So we're going to need to bring that into our component. So we're going to import and um, we'll call it what fork from. And then we need to have a the path to the static directory, which is up to and then down to static. And it's going to be a fork SVG. And what we should be able to do then, we should be able to um, just have an image rather than a uh, rather than a uh, an icon there. So we should be say um, image. Source equals, and then we have the curly braces, which is going to in our JSX it's going to evaluate to the value of fork, and we should really have an alt alt text on a, on a, a uh, an image. Let's say fork icon like that. Save that. Uh, and I'm having to, um, it hasn't taken that, has it? So what's the problem there? Let's have a look. Oh, I said form, not fork. Oh, there we go. I'm having to re um, reload the page because my hot, oh, there we are. So my hot reload isn't working properly. So it's a bit close. This has got a nice gap there, but that's that the zero or that one is right up against the fork symbol. You can see it's this kind of Y shape. But let's put a um a spacer in there. Hyper such, thank you so much for the subscription. That's very, very kind of you. Have some hyperspace hype. So so grateful for that subscription, so thank you so much. Yeah, we're um we're we're kind of in a, new, a bit of a out of our comfort zone on Codebase Alpha this uh, this month. We're working on the front end, so I'm working in it with a with JavaScript, which is you know, by by um, by no means my speciality. I'm very much a back end developer, so I'm learning a lot. I'm hoping with these with the series of videos that um, people who may be hesitating to get into um, into the JavaScript side can see that you can do it. it causes a few frustrations but hopefully I, I go through the frustrations for you so you don't have to um, but also um, it's actually building a practical kind of site so we're building a, a portfolio website which um, people can um, take inspiration for, for from and, and, and stick up on, on, on the internet and, and kind of sell their work as they build up their portfolio especially good for um, for people uh, trying to get into the developer uh, world really so let's get a bit of spacing after that, well, um, that image. So the way we can get some spacing really, really easily, 
is to simply actually insert physical space like that inside our JSX. Um, and we should be able to close that up. If that makes it a bit better. And it's minutely better, but not an awful lot. Let's have a look. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, hmm, we'll have to have a look at that. Okay, so what I would also like to do, so looking at this line, it would be nice if, well it's nice, it lights up that star, look, quite fun. What's it doing? Let me click on it. Okay, that's nice. Uh, my fork doesn't do anything cool because it's not an icon. Um, I think it would be nice if, if these were in kind of badges, this four and this one and two and zero, or whatever, were like badges. So they're, they're in kind of um, a label, circular label, like a badge. So let's go and have a look at that because we we did just see that there was a whole section on labels within the Semantic UI um, documentation. So let's have a look. So here's a different kind of labels. So we've got labels with a kind of a button type background and an icon and a value. Which is not quite what I want. You've got labels at point, which is nice for your errors. And I like these. We're going to use these tags, I think. Wrap uh, around ribbons, floating messages, icon labels. Our oh, circular labels here. Yeah, this is what we want. So let's see what the code is for that. So it's simply UI circular label. Um, let's go and do that. And we're not, and we're not got an awful lot of colour on the site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it fairly monochrome, I think. And then if we, once it's kind of finished, we can go and put splashes of colour in if we feel that that's kind of an appropriate thing to do. Um, okay, so let's introduce another span. We can put a class on this. Um, on our text here. So let's grab that. We don't need that anymore. Pop our calculated value inside a span. Like that. And then what we can do, we can give this a class. Class name, it's camel case, remember, so it's not just class because we're in React component, you have to use the proper syntax. So it was UI circular label. And the same here. It's name equals UI circular label. So what's that going to look like? Okay, so we've got some slightly messed up, so but but it's, it's, it's that's what I want that effect. So let's go and have a look at what's messed it up. So we've still got the Stargaze account in there, so we can get rid of that. Um, um, I think. I think what we're going to have to do is make this a div rather than a span because we can't enclose us we need to in, we can't enclose a span within a span I don't believe. Make that a div. Make this a div. A div. Let's just tidy the HTML for the JSX up a bit. Like that. So that then should float the icon or the image and the, um, the circular label. Let's have a look at what that does. 
Yeah, but that's, that's floated. And also, it's, it's kind of sorted out that weirdness with how close that number was to the, to the image. That, I, I like that. So, I like the look of using icons rather than using words. That, um, that improves it. So, what else can we do? Well, I don't like having this um, this link here with all that with the HTTPS. We need a, like a you know, just not, um, a text link, don't we? So let's have a look at doing that. Um, okay, so um, let's put a div here, which we'll do a class in a moment. And we'll have this link go and live up there rather than being down there. So let's get rid of that. Okay, so we've got a link. Um, we can simply say something here like um, open repo. Okay, save that. And the reason why I'm kind of just doing it a little bit t at a time is that you know, I want to see the effect this has and normally what I would do is work on two monitors so I'd have my code on one monitor and my website on another and of course we'd have the hot load reload working and we'd be able to see the instant changes I'm limited obviously with this setup not being able to show you two two monitors uh, and my second monitor my streaming rig is very small it's not really um, that practical so, uh, okay, so what we want to do is get some, sp this is all a bit cramped. So, um, let's go and have a look at cards. Also, it, I quite like that grey that we saw with the cards. Oh, that looks the, um, like subtext on the card. Let's find cards. Where's cards gone? There it is. Views. So there's this like grey text here. Let's see what that is. Okay, so there's the image, and it's meta. It's got a class of meta. Okay, so let's let's try giving our div class of meta. Hopefully we'll have now have a that kind of slightly greyed out feet feeling to that link. And we do, and that looks nice. I like this um, monochrome look. And what we'll do is like this, like we've got the, the the avatar badge there. We'll put a few splashes of colour around at some point, but we'll we'll work mostly in monochrome. I think get it looking nice in monochrome. I think what we'd like to do is have like a rule underneath there, like a line underneath the title. So let's go and have a look at the cards. I'm sure I've seen that. Yeah, so they've got that kind of rule across there, haven't they? So what's that? The obvious is they're there. They've got subheader. Mm, okay. Okay, we could have a subheader Plain description. Let's, let's let's try and keep focus. What we want to do, like a a divider of some kind. Oh, look at this! Buttons attached to the bottom of the card. Now we can use that definitely. Okay, that's interesting as well. Look at that. Got the placeholder text. Okay. Um, Okay, we're going to have to. I think we're going to have to guess. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. We'll give it a guess. So, um, underneath the header, let's have another div. Um, 
I don't think we need any text yet. So we'll give it a class. Um, oh, well, that's going to be UI. Um, let's try divider. All I can think of other than ruler. Rule. Look at that. Uh, you see, th this is really interesting the way this is working because you can you can almost well, I'm, I'm pretty much guessing what these are. It does seem to it does seem to be kind of living up to its promise to of um, of being a semantic kind of um, UI framework, so or, um, styling framework. Okay, so we've got Open Repo here. It's a bit close to that. Um, So we want an icon here as well, don't we? Next to the um, open repo, we want a GitHub icon. Let's go. Let's go to Town and Icons. So uh, open repo, we're going to want to have uh, an icon here, and it's going to have a class name. It's going to be something icon. And let's just type GitHub and see what happens. GitHub icon. Save that. Cool, it's a bit small though. Compared to that star, it's probably a bit smaller than that star. Let's make it a bit more prominent. Let's say it's a large icon. Um, large icon. I know you can. You've got things like tiny, um, small, large, huge, big things like that. That's better. That's our icon. We need. We could. We could do with making it part of our link, though, couldn't we? So let's grab the icon. that have a look at that okay nice so the whole thing is part of our link and it lights up we hover over it and you notice we, it, it's 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 not uh, a different color it's, it's just a it's just a bolding in it which is nice so we could do with a um a blank line there I think Hmm. A bit cramped. So let's just try. Um, let's just try putting a, a a break in there and see if that works. Or if it's too big. And that's a bit big, isn't it? That. Okay. Well, I'm gonna step back from that. Um, I almost want a bit more margin around it. Um, I wonder if we can do it with margin. Um, don't know. Hmm, I'm not sure. We'll leave it for now, and we'll try and figure that one out. Um, so, yes, uh, there was an icon that I came across, project diagram icon, which looked quite nice. Uh, where's the icons? There they are. They're in the icon sets. Under, was it under code? Yeah, project diagram, I like that. Let's um, have a look at that one. That is project diagram icon. Literally, project the words project diagram icon. I love this. This is actually um, styling that I can understand. So uh, header, and then we want an icon. Hmm. 
and we'll say um, class name equals project dyad ram icon and all these icons are coming from Font Awesome uh, which is really good so, uh, that's a well known kind of uh, font package so we're getting um, we can leverage all, all of those lovely icons that people, other people have done for us it's a shame they didn't have one for fork ok so we've got a project diagram icon same for that Yes, I like that. Maybe I've maybe I've gone a bit over the top on icons, but you know, I don't care. So we've got this description of the project here. Let's try that subheading. So we had a header, then we had the meta, and the extra content. Let's try it. We'll just try this out. I'm not sure if we need this. Give it a go. A div for the class name um, of course a subheading we don't want that it'll be a proper div okay and we'll just say description Okay, so this is it's hit this it's in with this floating going on here, isn't it? I wonder how we get around that. Um, you know, I don't know how we switch off the float. It's these floated things here. Um, let's just say I don't left a line. Maybe that'll switch off the floating. No. Hmm. Um. Is it subheading? Maybe it's maybe it's just ignoring things. Let's go back to our semantic UI card definitions and look at subheadings. Get him kind of bit to run away with himself and thinking I can do all this just by guessing, but I guess it's not quite as easy as that. Um, this subheading gone. There it is. So let's have a look at that. It was UI subheader. UI subheader. Okay. Um, UI subheader. If this doesn't work, we'll just leave it and won't have it. But there it is. Oh, that's good. Okay. Description. It's nice. Um, Bit crowded, but we'll try and sort that out. Okay, now there, there's that. There's those buttons which are attached to the bottom of the um, Glasgow Astro. Welcome to the uh, stream. Thank you for following. Have some electric alf hype. Thank you so much for the follow. 360. So we're well on our way towards our target 400. So thanks very much for that. Okay, so um. What I've done um, before the stream, I went over to our GitHub, uh, which is uh, github.com slash SMB, with all my project code is kept. And I went on, and for each of these um, these projects that we've got, that we've got um, YouTube playlists for, so for example, the Z80 emulator project, we've got a, um, a playlist of like nine videos up on YouTube. What I did, I hit this edit button, and I set the website to be the value of the of the playlist. So it's the YouTube playlist, 
associated with this project. So and this is the home page, uh, it's here. So clicking on this takes you to the playlist, so like this, eventually. Come on, you can do it. There we are, there's the Z80 emulator uh, playlist. So what I thought we could do was to have a button on here, which clicking on it, if there was a playlist available, you could click on it and go and watch the videos. Um, so let's do that. But I'll say once again, when we were, when we were leafing through here, I'm sure this, which was a button which had been attached to the bottom of the but, bottom of the card. So how have they done that? They've used a UI bottom attached button. No, that's this is great, isn't it? That's a slight. I mean, you could possibly, you could really, you really could guess that if you were confident enough. I think remembering this styling framework is going to be really easy once you get into it. Okay, so UI bottom attached button is the classes we need. Um, we're going to need to change our. Um, we're going to need to change our our GraphQL. So let's grab the GraphQL query. Copy that into the paste clipboard, and then we're going to go to our GraphQL endpoint. So remember that's HTTP slash slash localhost eight thousand slash underscore 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 GraphQL. So this will bring up the GraphQL playground, or graphical as it's called in this particular implementation. Hopefully that will load. So we may have to run it in a more compatible browser, I guess. Let's use Chromium Edge and see if we can get it up in there. There we are, it's better. Let's just get rid of this. Okay, so here's our uh, Chromium Edge, and this is the. Um, it's still got the last the GitHub query that we we did last time, actually. So let's let's uh, have a play with this. So what I what I would like to do is have the home page in here. So we should have for our repository. So we're looking at the repositories on a node here. We should have home page. We do. So let's click that. So we get home page down here, and let's run that GraphQL query against GitHub. And there we get the playlist. See there. Z80 emulator playlist. So we now got that. We've also got these languages, which we can use. We can use those tags for, I think. But we're getting ten. I think getting ten different languages back is a bit much. Most of them we've only got a few, but that one you can see we've got a whole load for the Atlantis thing. So let's let's limit it to three. So what we can do is. Say, take the first three, first three, um, first three languages. Run that. In most cases, it's not changed, but here you see where we had HTML as well. It's not included this time. It's only three. Okay. Um, that should be that should be good. So let's. So what we did, we changed that to three. Added home page here. So I think this home page can probably go. Here, where it's a bit more natural to have it up there, I think. Make sure that still works. It does. Okay. So we want to put home page there and change that to a three. So let's do that in our code. So let's get the first three languages and we want the home page URL as one of the uh, data items for getting back. If you're not used to GraphQL, um, I've done a whole video series on it. I think there's six or seven videos uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, Fermantic, welcome. Yes, uh, I didn't see the new um, Fermantic release. Uh, is that uh, is that version two nine or is it or is it version three Fermantic? Thank you for joining, by the way. I'm just um, I'm just still obviously learning a lot about. Um, 
it's 2.84 okay great so we'll have to have to grab that at some point i do have to do a, a gatsby upgrade actually before the end of the stream so i'll upgrade um fermantic at the same time what i'm finding with fermantic i'm sure it's 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 absolutely down to the design philosophy and i'm really enjoying it is i'm, I'm almost able to guess some of the class names i'm using so i've had a few kind of hits and misses but it's i think with just a, a few a few hours of use this is going to become a really really intuitive way for someone like myself not a front end, front end dev to style pages and, and they look really professional so i'm very pleased with it and um I don't know if you know, um, there was uh, a Twitter user called Lubber2009 who tweeted me um, the day after my kind of almost catastrophic stream when I had real problems with the official Semantic release, um, told me all about Fermantic and um, I'm so grateful because it's a, a joy to use. The new installation experience that you've done for Fermantic UI is uh, wonderful. Uh, no more copying of stuff around. Um, and and the gulp gulp scripts and things like that really great. Lou was part of the, of the maintainers team. Are fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm I'm just so pleased that he contacted me because I'm pretty sure I would have probably given up the project at that point and gone and gone and used Bootstrap. And I didn't want to use Bootstrap. Everyone uses Bootstrap, and I'm really kind of I'm really into this idea of um, the semantics of you know just to say something like that project diagram icon or right floated UI circular label it just seems so intuitive and, and that's what I'm in, I'm up in for really I'm up for that kind of thing okay so uh, we've now got our home page let's let's whack a button in shall we um, so not every um, project I've got on on github actually has a home page so um, I think what we need to do is to um, only include only include it when it does so we're gonna have to have a bit of uh, a bit of JavaScript in here now you what you classically we want to do uh, an if then else uh, but we can't do if then else within JSX we've got because that's a statement and we can only have expressions inside our curly braces in Gatsby here and it's the same with react so the other reason why I'm doing Gatsby is that this is going to give me some transferable skills for uh, React. Yes, I'm really looking forward to uh, version 3 for Mantic though, yes. Um, and I'm really hoping you, you're going to be able to um, reconcile back to the um, the official uh, repo. Because that's I think that's a really w um, worthy goal you've got there. Not just going off on a fork by yourselves, but with that ultimate aim of, 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 um, of reconnecting with the official official repo. Um, and with all your wonderful input into it. So, um, congratulations and well done on that. Okay, so what do you want to do? So, we've got an, when we when we want to talk about the um, the, the values we're getting back from our from our query here, um, the thing we're going to be uh, referencing is Node. So that's what we're pulling out. That, that's what we're pushing into our our fat arrow function here, the Node. So, what we can say is. Um, node dot and we should have a home page URL as a, as a valid value so if that's not equal I will use the definitely not equal so that's the uh, the exclamation point tr uh, double uh, equal sign which I've got um, lig ligatures on so it gives you that nice um, not equal sign there I'm using Cascadia code um, so that's why we got the nice ligature um, so we'll see if that's not the empty string then what we want to say is that we're going to um, we use the question mark and that means um, if that is true it's not the empty string then we're going to output some code and it's going to be JSX we're going to output a div like that and the div is going to contain um, what's it going to contain we want a YouTube icon and we want the text um, YouTube playlist or playlist. Okay, so let's uh, put a icon like that, and the class name of the icon is going to be um, YouTube icon. 
pardon me, and we're going to want some text, which is going to be a link. Let's have inside the, the uh, anchor tag. Okay, so href and it's going to be equal to the the value of node.hub page page URL. Um, we're going to have that we're going to have to decorate it with the um, the no opener things here. So we want to have this this rel target blank so it opens in a tab. We don't want to navigate away from our uh, our site. We just want to open a new tab on their browser. So that's that, and we want the text um, playlist. playlist. And then we want to say if um, if it is the empty string, we're just going to output. And empty string ourselves, nothing at all. Okay, so now we want to give this a class. So class name. And it was, I can't remember, UI bottom attached button or something like that, I think it was. Let's go there. Back to it. UI bottom attached button. I'm getting to know it already. UI bottom attached. You're very welcome, Fromantic. It's um, I, I, I admire what you're doing. Uh, let's save that and see what that looks like. There we go. That's nice. That's our bottom attached button. The YouTube icon is too small. And you can see where it, we haven't got a playlist. Our card is extended to the full height. We just haven't got the button at the bottom. That's fine. And if we hover over this, then we are actually, if we look down the bottom there, we've got our playlists. So we'll try that out in a second. So let's make this YouTube icon a bit bigger. Um, so, YouTube large icon. There we go. Would it be bigger, do you think? Big icon? Yeah, that's a nice one. Nice big button to go to the playlist. Um, okay. Hmm. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually to... I don't think there's a bit of... Hmm, I think another divider there. Should we try another divider? I'm not sure if we're going to get... These cards are going to get a bit too big if we're not too careful. Um, let's try another divider and see if it see if it makes it too big. We can always get rid of it again. Um, so, do I divider? Um, try that. If not, if Fermantic's still in the chat, you could, maybe they could help us with them um, with margins. No, it's, it's, yeah, I think we'll just, we'll just skip that, I think. Let's just leave it like that. We can always come back to it. Um, so, the other thing that we've got, coming back in our GraphQL query, is the languages that are used by the project. So let's, um, let's include those. Rumbling Geek, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Thank you for joining. Very quiet night tonight, so yeah, cheers to you.
So we're working on our um, our site. And what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just trying to style these project cards. So this is all data which has been pulled back from, from GitHub using a GraphQL query. I'm just trying to style these um, in a kind of a, a way that I that I like. Um, it may some people may say they're a bit it's a bit busy, but I, I like all these icons. I must admit, but I want some tags now, language tags underneath. Um, so let's have a look at doing some language tags. So we want them in between the bottom attached button and the description. So let's just put a placeholder div in there. Um, so that's that place there, I think. Uh, after the description, it's there, isn't it? So let's pop a div in there. Okay, so we're going to give that a class in a minute, but let's um, let's think about what goes in. So we've got we've got an array of languages, and we've we've constrained it to be the first three languages. And just like we have in this top repositories kind of array, we've got edges and then nodes. We've got the same. We've got edges and then nodes. The only thing that's in the node is the name of the language. So we need to we need to have a, a map, a JavaScript map here, to um to to create a function which is going to um it's going to be applied to each of the elements of the array. Needs colour, yeah. So at the moment I'm working on it being monochrome, completely monochrome. Uh, and then I think what I want to do is, is put some kind of splashes of highlight colour. I want it to be fairly kind of, um, what shall I say, um, staid or, I don't want to say professional because that's not the right word, but you know, I want it to be kind of subdued. And then I'm going to put some flashes of colour in. But I, I want to get the whole kind of site kind of built before I decide exactly how to put some highlight colours in. I think that might look quite good. Okay, so let's get our JSX in here now. So um, we're going to have to do a map of the um, the language edges. So we got um, we got node dot languages dot edges. And then we're going to call the um, the map function on that, and we'd normally have something like this. Okay. Um, what we want to in here, we want the actual node out of edges. So if we put some more curly braces in there, be like a destructor, a deconstructor, or um, whatever. Um, that and then in here we can put some JSX. So here we could have a span and inside we can put in um, the name of the language. So node dot name that's the name of the language. Okay so that's that's not what we that's not the final thing but let's have a look at what we get when we run that. Okay, so we get the words for the different languages printed out. So that's good. So that's the start. So what I noticed when we went back to the um, back to these labels was there were some labels which looked like kind of um, luggage labels, luggage tags. I think it'd be nice if we had our languages in that style of label. That's a UI label. We're going to go with the grey one because that's Kind of, that's the uh, conceit at the moment. We're going to have everything in grey. Uh, okay, so UI UI la UI label was it? Oh, yeah, I've gotten already. UI tag label. Okay, so um, over here. So with this span plus a, a UI. Label. We can have a look at that. Yes, I like that. But they need—they're too big. Too big. 
It was small. Um, small tag label. Okay, that's looking okay. Still too big though, I think. So what's smaller than small? Tiny? Tags. There we go, that's looking nice. They all, because there's only three, they do fit on a single line, which is good. Needs colour, yeah, I think you, you are right, it does need some colour, but... I think I'm right. Um, in that, to work in black and white, or shades of grey, initially, and then to look at what... Because we don't go over overboard on colours, that's one of the main problems I find with some, some sites that are too colourful. Right, okay, so, um, hmm. it would be nice to have some, sh some shadow, wouldn't it, around those, get lift these these cards off the page a bit. Let's go and have a look at the cards again, let's see if we can have some shadowing behind the cards, make them a bit 3D. Those aren't. That one looks like it's raised slightly, doesn't it? Not there. Horizontal cards look nice. Raise above the page, there we go. So that is raised card. Okay, well that's fairly it's fairly obvious, isn't it? Um and also we make them stackable as well. So what what happens when we have a quick look at what happens when we go responsive? They they just squash together and we don't want that. We want it to stack and we know how to do stackable because we had a stackable um menu, the blog about contact was a stackable menu so let's let's sort both of those things out at the same time so this is going to be um for stack of all raised cards have a look at that that's nice we've got a nice little shadow behind them it lifts them a bit from the page and then when we go into the responsive mode, then they do change. Get a bit squashed on a tablet, but that's not too bad. But they do go nicely to uh, single cards at that point. Okay. I'm quite pleased with that. But these, what else can we do? Let's just let's just do all the... Oh, there we go. Look at that. When I hover over it... it it moves, animates slightly. I want that. Let's just do all the things. So what's the difference here? I can't just link to another page. It's just... It's just a link card. They've got a link there. Hmm. These jiggle as well. I think it's just the word link. My link card. If it's not, we can see, take it away again. Refresh. Oh, there we go. So that little animation, really quite cute. So we've got open repo, so we click on that, we should open the synthesizer repo, which we do. Now if we click on the synthesizer playlist, we should go to our YouTube playlist. If you're wanting to change the margin on components, 
some have different variations to change margin and padding but a lot don't unfortunately and this is something we are aware of and currently have an issue discussing possible ways to fix this so that'd be interesting to, to know what how you, how you go about that make the color happen as you mouse over each card that suggests um, rambling geek yeah I'm not sure how but we can give it a go that that's gone to our synthesizer link page um, playlist so that, that's actually working nicely um, as I say I think I want to leave it black and white for the moment so uh, for magic really what I wanted to do is kind of just pad these these elements out a bit in the divs give a bit of margin but not not like a full break and um, maybe I could just I don't know, kind of, I'm not sure exactly how to do that if you got any advice how to do that on just a simple div that'd be um, interesting I can't see anything obvious. Where's that divider? Oh, I like that. Nice. This just gives it a bit too much padding around the divider. Okay. Um. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that that page. So let's um, just stop this for a second. Let's um, git add dot. Oh, let's commit that bit of code. So uh, git commit sm filing of project cards. That. Get back into that development. So, so far we've done an awful lot of Fermantic. We do a little bit more Fermantic, I think. Um, and then we're going to, I think we'll have a go at working on a different page. But if we go back to my kind of very rough sketch of what the page was going to look like, the home page. Then we would we had our header with the the avatar, the title, the buttons for the menu, which are probably going to change what they do. The only one I know we're going to do is blog. Then we were going to have some kind of blurb here, and then a set of social buttons. So I think what we should do is work on those social buttons, and they need to kind of float over there. So that means we're going to have to go into kind of Gatsby stroke React mode again. So we can um, we can look at. So we're going to be working basically on our index page, and we're going to be we're going to want to create some more um, React components. We're going to want a social component and a kind of intro component for the blurb or a blurb component, we want to call it. So let's go and do that. Okay. So uh, in our components. We'll work on the social buttons first. Let's create a new file. We'll call it social. Yes. Um, we'll go into our projects and we'll just we'll copy the first few lines. Don't need GraphQL in here. Get rid of that line. Okay, so we want um, a new component. So we'll call it social. A functional component. That and we'll export default social. That's our kind of basic setup. And inside here is going to be our 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 um JSX. So what I've been doing, and it's worked out quite successfully, because um, I don't want to work with fragments at this stage, uh, React Fragments, which is where you can output multiple um, multiple nodes of the DOM. I'm just wrapping everything in a div, because that makes it really nice and simple. I can have a, a, a fairly standard um, a React component. 
Uh, I've got to worry about getting into fragments at this stage, which is just, you know, it's, it's, we could do it, but it doesn't seem much point in going over Broadway. It's a very simple website. It's just a learning website for getting used to Gatsby and also as a lead into learning some React. So um, what we're going to want is um, some kind of um, heading, whatever, H4 perhaps. And we'll say, oh, I don't know what, um, get in touch uh, through through any of these rules. Okay, so that's part of the social thing. And then we want um, we want some buttons. So let's have a div. That and this is going to be a set of buttons. So class name equals. UI and then just like we had a collection of cards we just had a class name of cards and here we just have a class name of buttons and what's going to be inside there it will, it will sort out the laying out of some buttons we need to spell buttons correctly not buttons there we go so we need to have some buttons inside here and these are basically going to be anchor tags so we can't use the link the, the built-in link um, a component from Semantic UI React or from Gatsby, sorry, and uh, they have a kind of built in link component. We can't use that because that's really only used for um, for links to internally within your site. So we have to use uh, anchor tags. So let's just get a bunch of anchor tags in here. Um, what we'll do is we'll um, what should we do? Let's just Thing to do. Let's just make them buttons. So, class name equals and then UI um, icon button. I think that's what we saw before. And then we want an icon inside there. And the icon's going to be um, class name. Course, um, uh, what's the big, big, or large, big? Uh, Twitter, big icon. I need to close the anchor tag off. I did close it off. There it is. Uh, I've done wrong. No closing tag. Um, I believe it does. Take some web nice so div 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 oh um I forgot to close the quotation marks there we go let's bring that down here close the anchor tag off there um, and what we'll do is just have a some more Um, perhaps. So what we want is um, we want LinkedIn, Discord, um, Twitch, GitHub, Twitch. Okay, um, let's go and have a look at what icons we've got available to us. Let's wait for the slurp then. What a nice glass of wine that. Icons. Some B 
Champions. Brands. That's what we want, brands. Okay, so what have we got here? We've got Pay, Atlassian, Battle.net, Bitcoin. Um, we've got Discord. Good there, okay, good. Um, LinkedIn we wanted. I'm not on Facebook, so kind of Facebook. Um, it's a what we used before. There's LinkedIn. Um, we've got YouTube before, so let's. let's uh, we want Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. YouTube, Twitch, um, what else? Discord is on, isn't it? Um, okay, let's try, see what that looks like. You don't do anything at the moment, don't go anywhere. We'll be able to, oh, we need to actually add them into a, a page, don't we, to see them. So let's do that. Um, so on our index page, uh, what we need to do, uh, temporarily stick a social tag in there, we'll finish that off, do that properly in a moment. So this is components the social JS. Um, Importing social from that component social. Okay, save that and have a look, see what we get. Okay, that's nice. So these are channels. And we've got our. So now we need to sort out links. Maybe have some um, tool tips on those so people don't understand what the icons actually are. They can find find out what they are. Okay, let's do that bit. Um, so in our social page again, social components. Um, okay, so we're going to need to have. We want to open in the separate tag again, tab as well. So um, and in projects, we had the code that did that. That was this target blank and rel no and no referrer. So let's put that in each place. Going to go in there. And then we're going to want to have um, do the href last. We want to some, want a tooltip, so data tooltip, and this is going to be my data. My YouTube channel. Twitch channel. You've been lurking, I didn't realise you'd lurk. I I say this there is the I haven't got a lurk command, I must sort that out. I like the lurk command on your on your stream, Gremlin Geek. No problem. I'm sure it's um, little E blasters uh, staying with you today. Is he's more important than watching this? Okay, so we all we're doing at the moment is adding some tool tips to my Discord. I don't think there's any point in putting the GitHub because the whole page really is a one big link to our GitHub repository. So it's a bit pointless having it up in the um, socials that'd be perhaps we could do couldn't get to sleep oh well I guess a, um, a tot of tot of brandy would sort him out <laughs> not, not uh, seriously not 
Okay, let's have a look at this. Okay, so we've got our... So those that are appearing at the top there, that's not ideal. Um, so we have position, tool tip positioning, um, HT, HTML, anchor, tool tip positioning. It's a bit too much. I I'm not into any of this stuff. Um, this is why Fermantic is so good for me. It means I don't have to learn all this CSS. Or SCSS um, SAS of some kind. As I could use. I mean, obviously, we can, we can tweak all of the styles we've got by using our own custom ones. But what I'm trying to do is use... Um, Use semantic as much as possible. But talk to you. There we go. She's using CSS. I don't want to use CSS to do the pure. HTML is what I want really. Once again, this is using this is using CSS, and I don't want to use CSS. I want to use pure HTML. Let's try putting that in. Tooltip position, maybe. Let's search for that, shall we? Um, HTML tooltip position. Um, data hyphen tooltip position. Anyone got any ideas? <laughs> you got a link there. Oh, that's just the. Um, is it out? The UK, the UK version of the K2 is out, is it? Oh, look at this. Free UK delivery. Thank you very much, uh, Rambling Geek. Thank you very much. I'll keep that. I'll keep that there. We'll actually use that. Go and buy one of those. Um, um, position is it? The data position up. Let's try data position bottom and see if that's anything like what I want. Um, 
a type and position of course do it on the first one to see if that makes any difference whatsoever uh, most refresh yeah okay that's a bit weird a bit weird hmm center Save. oh there we go that's what we want bottom center so shall I have it alternate no I think I'll have a pair on the bottom okay well that's good got there in the end oh, that was wrong No, that was right. That's it. Okay, let's have a look at that. Yeah, so as this is going to be floating over here, you see it won't actually over, overwrite the projects on GitHub title. That's good. Okay, fantastic. So, um, so what should we do next? We need to kind of combine that. We need like a, um, uh, we need it to be part of some kind of area at the top of the page where it's got a. Um, the text which is going to go here and it's going to be like two thirds of the screen and then one th one third is going to be the social buttons floating over to the side so let's create a new component and we'll call this intro yes uh, and we're going to get these bits And once again, we're going to have a, a const intro equals that's our own functional component and export default intro like that intro JS no intro like that. Okay, and then we need a div inside here, and that will get rid of those squigglies. Okay, so what's this going to look like? Well, it's going to be, it's going to be, um, it's going to be, what's it going to be? Okay, so I think the first thing it's going to be is that kind of the heading, the page. And that's currently this, this piece of code here, isn't it? So let's grab that. We don't want, we want as little as possible in here. Okay, so let's grab that and over in the intro we're going to drop that into the text there. Okay, hello from Codebase Alpha. We'll get, we'll, we'll, we're going to have the waving hand all that eventually, we'll, we'll tie it up. So then we want to have, um, okay we want a, a container of some kind, don't we, a grid. So, um, Let's put a div in there. We'll get rid of this item. We'll go pure semantic. Let's have a div. And this is going to contain, we're going to have a grid which is two thirds or mostly text and then the social buttons floating over to the side. Uh, so, semantic, unfortunately, you won't be able to post a link. Um, just a second. And the best thing to do is to make you a make you a, a VIP, and then you'll be able to post that link. Um, one second, we'll do that. Pull that over here. So just bear with me a second. I'll make you a VIP, and then you should be able to post your link. And I'm keen to get the link. So if I can look at a 
Um, so, now unfortunately, Twitch in their wisdom have changed the um, the layout of my um, my dashboard. So I'm going to have to have a quick flick through, make sure I can find it. Okay, add new um, Mantic. Gotcha, and I'm going to. Make you a VIP. Okay, could you, Fanatic, could you try posting your link again now? You should be able to, and you should have a, um, a little um, gemstone against your against your username. I'm excited about this keyboard being available. That, yep, that worked. Thank you very much, Fanatic. Go and have a look what you posted. Oh, okay, right. All tips. <laughs> it's actually all built in. In 2.2, so it's old. Let's have a look at this code. It's updated data position, yeah. Yeah. I think I found it in the end by um, hook and by crook. Great, thank you very much for commenting. That's confirmed at least I'm on the right, on the right, um, right lines. Okay, so uh, where are we? Okay, we're going to go back over here. So, um, so we're going to want to. Uh, this is going to be. Um, what's it going to be? We've got two columns. The class name. Okay, so here we go into uh, two column, a stackable grid. Okay. Okay. Well, that should that sounds pretty good to me. Um, then we're going to want to have another div. And another div. Um, another div. The so two divs. So the first div. Um, we're going to want to make it um, a column. Last name. Now in the grids we have a, we can set them to be columns. Column um, and I, now I do believe from Antip that you're working on a 16 column grid or 16 16 across on your grids. So we want to make it I don't know 10 10 wide is it? Did you say 10 wide? I think that's what it is. And this one would be class name equals U, UI. Um, no, just column six wide. I think I read that somewhere. Like that, and then in here we want to put social. So we have to import social from the component directory. Import social. Like that. Save that. And then over in uh, index, we no, no longer need social. Well, that wants to be intro. And this needs to be intro. So, let's have a look what that's done. So this should move across, I hope. Doesn't, we, it doesn't change, it's okay. We just probably need some content in there, that's all. So I think what we're going to do, I'm not going to write any content for it at the moment. We'll use one of those placeholders we saw. Let's go and have a look at placeholders in Fermantic. In Fermantic. Placeholder. So this is placeholder text. 
I think that looks really cool. So let's just grab the whole of that code. So I have a little image, maybe a picture of me, and then some introductory kind of blurb about me, about the channel. So over in intro, inside that div, we'll just drop that placeholder stuff. Okay, so let's go and have a look at that. Okay, missing something. I've missed something. Um, have a look what I've done wrong. So in index, there's intro. Intro is bringing social. Or into it's supposed to be intro that's why the problem save refresh still not obviously got something else wrong there's a spelling issue as it always is with me um, intro there intro there Const intro equals this. Put default intro. Hmm. Um, have a look in here. Add to rebuild. That's why the problem. So uh, can't resolve our components or misspelled components. That's why it is components. There we go. We should have looked at that before that should compile this time. Come on. Can't resolve such a component social. Can't resolve components. Well, it's actually in the same directory, so let's try that. Ah, uh, it's just it's just that, isn't it? We're in the same directory already. Let's see if that sorts it. Yep, there we go. We've rebuilt. So what she's saying, I've used uh, an href is required. I haven't done the hrefs yet. That's fine. So we should be able to see the change this time. There we go. Yeah. Look at that, it's flashing. Now these float nicely, and there's a space under them for my um, my tooltips. Nice. I'd like to make these the full width though, these lines. Can you change that? Go and have a look at this. Content. Okay, so I can have lines of text. Let's have a look. Line, line, line. Yes, done that. Paragraphs, image, variation, line length. There we go. Full line. What we want, full line. And do that. So make all of, all the ones fall apart from the last one. I'm a big fan of Fantic. I'm very, very impressed. Okay, uh, so now we should get a more better impression of the full width of that blurb. Okay, so it's not all the way across to there. So there's something not quite with my, right with my um, spelling. Yeah, I'm terrible with spelling. Yeah, I just, it's just the pain of my life, as as, um, as Fuel Snowball will tell you when we do our joint streams. My spelling just trips him up all the time because I'm getting it wrong. Um, okay, so um, two columns stuck with column 10 wide. Um, columns wide. 
think that's correct. I'm going to want to um, bring that in, aren't we? And then this lot could do have been indented. So what have we done wrong there? UI, two, column, stackable grid. Look at the container, I suppose. Not sure that'll make any difference. Let's just make sure our stackable's working. That stacks it nicely. We are going to need a blank line though there. Why is that not all the way across to here? Um, okay, well let's just sort out the index page. We want another base after the intro. Yeah, that's better. So I'd like to see those further across. So let's go and have a look at the grids. Columns. I thought there were 16 columns. So four wide. So let's have a look at this. Columns. Let's have a look at that's what we want there, you see. Let's have a look at that. Six wide column. Ten wide column. Let's try. Let's try it like that. Um, intro. I'm pretty sure. The, I'm not sure the order actually matters. Ten wide column reads better though. Wide column. Hmm. Let's have a look at the. Oh, it's got errors. Each child in the list should have a unique key prop. Okay, so that's in projects. Each child in a list should have a unique key property. So we need to sort that out. Okay. about that. Let me get my notes. I'm just going to my notes here. Um, let's see if we can sort that out. That seems a bit more important. So, projects. I guess it's on the cards that we're producing here. We want something like key equals and then put JSX in there. Um, and what's the JSX we could use? What's unique? Well, the, U, the URL is unique, isn't it? So we could take node.url, I suppose, could be the key. Done property class. Do you mean class name? So I've made a mistake somewhere with my. Where have I done that? Have I done that in intro here? Yes, I have. Look, I've got class. Would be class name because I couldn't paste that, didn't I? Out of the web page. So that's why we're in React land here. We can't use class. We have to use class name. Okay, well that's good.
before. It was really clever. I'd use some funky um, editor feature to sort that out. But well. Okay. Have another look at that page now. Uh, what's it saying now? Render method of projects. Get warning keys for more information. Each child should have a new key. So I've got some more um, unique key problems, but that's okay because I think I know that those are because I'm. Um, I think that. I don't want that. That's Visual Studio I want here. I think that's because uh, over in my project, I'm also doing a bit of a. Uh, I'm stepping through those, so if I give that a key, and um, that key could be what could it be? Could be um, no dot name, I guess. Okay, so we're happy. It's just the hot react, the react hot loader thing, which is not being detected, which is interesting. Okay, well we got that sorted, so let's um, get rid of the... This, I'd like to get that kind of fixed, but we'll just have to live with that for the moment. Gives us an idea where it's... I'd like that to be across here. Okay. Well, I think... I think I'm pretty happy with that page. At least uh, for the purpose of the stream so far. So let's... Let's just commit that, shall we? And uh, we'll say... Click add. Commit and... Starting of Linux. Starting Linux page. Click that. Okay. Development mode. So, I think what we ought to do is have a look at at least making a start. What's the time? 20 past 9. We've got a little bit of time left. So let's have a look, I think, at starting to implement the blog. Okay. Okay, so what do we want to do? Um, hmm. What do we want to do about doing that? Um, okay, so let's first have a new page. So in our pages directory, let's have a new file and we'll call that um, log.js. And it's going to be very similar to the index page. So let's copy everything from the index page into the blog page. And we're not going to have intro or project at this point. And have a container. Like that. And that. And this is going to be um blog. We're going to want to uh, our layout actually. A layout. Oh, it's going to be in our header, in fact. Here we are, header. Rather linking the that we're going to link to flash blog. Let's see if that actually then gives us another page. Fresh. Click on blog. And there we are. Went to a new page, which is called slash blog. Yeah. So that's simple. It's a simple um, new page. We're using the link um, component from Gatsby, which you use when you're linking within your site. You have to use the anchor tags if you're linking outside your site. So we've used the anchor tag mostly um, this evening, but we're now we're linking within our site, so we use um, the link and then the 
just a two um, property there. Okay, so what is our blog page going to have? It's going to have a list of posts, isn't it? So let's create. Let's create a. Let's, well, let's first let's create a um, a blog directory, a post directory. So let's new folder posts. This is where our posts are going to live, and in there we're going to create a new file. Um, so what we're going to do is we, our posts are going to be in markup. So we're going to create a markup file. We'll, co we'll create a welcome MD as our kind of first blog post. Um, and I do have a um, I do have a markdown preview thing here, so we should be able to see what it looks like. Now with Markdown, we want to be able to have some kind of metadata about our blog post. So we're going to use what's called Front Matter um, for our Markdown. And you define the Front Matter between three um, three dashes like that. So, and between there we can create our metadata. So we can say we can create a metadata item called Title, for example. Don't want to download that right in the middle of the stream, thank you. And we're going to say the title is going to be welcome. Um, we're going to what else we're going to have? We're going to have a date, and the date's going to be. We'll do it in programmer's preferred style. Uh, it's the twenty fourth. Like that, and we're going to have some tags. The tag's going to be uh, welcome. Okay, so that's our front matter, and then we're going to have a heading. It's going to be welcome to code base offer. Log. That may be too big, but we'll put it out. And then I don't know. Let's go and get some lorem ipsum for now, shall we? Um, you can sort out some. I can work out some actual text to put in there to start the blog off. Um, there we go. That'll do. Um, where do I get them? Well, let me get some from. Oh, there we go. That'll be fine. Yeah. So now we've got um, a markdown, uh, a markdown file. What we're going to need to do is to be able to GraphQL that. We're going to need to be able to query it using GraphQL. Remember, everything in ter terms of data processing, where it's we've got kind of dynamic data, dynamic in inverted quotes for a Gatsby site, we're going to have to use um, some kind of um, GraphQL query to, to read it. And what we want to do here, and I'll just check my notes here, we want to use. Um, First thing we need a plugin which is going to be able to read from the file system. So we want to be able to read our post directory and within that within GraphQL. So let's sort that out first. Um, and then the second thing we'll need to do is to be able to transfer markdown pardon me into HTML. And we use a transformer plugin to do that. So let's go and find the plugins we need over to Gatsby and we want the plugins um, area uh, oh the very first one is what we want Gatsby source file system so this is a plugin let me make this big bigger for you so you can read it this is a, um, a plugin for sourcing data in your Gatsby application for your local file system it creates a file node and various files and various transformer plugins can transform the file nodes into other types so we've got 
Gatsby Transformer JSON, transfers JSON files. Gatsby Transform Remark transforms Markdown files. So that's the, the other one we want, Gatsby Transformer Remark. So let's have this npm install command for the Gatsby source file system. Uh, I think we'll do a couple of things while we're here. Let's come out. So the first thing I think we should do, um, I've got a note, where's my note to um, update Gatsby? Yes. So if I do, um, are we getting prompted to update Gatsby at all? We're not. We'll leave that for the moment then. Let's install this, this plugin. Install that. We'll install another 50,000 npm modules. So once we've got these installed, we need to actually configure them in the Gatsby config. And what was the other one called we needed? It was a Gatsby Transformer Remark, this one here. Let's have a look at this first. Let's, in, let's configure this one. So in our Gatsby config, we have to add an entry in our plugins array, uh, which is going to be basically this. Basically this. And then we want to change that path name there. Let's go and do this. So um that's be config. This is our SAS plugin. This is our GraphQL plugin that we're doing. Put this in and of that. And this is going to be what we call posts, wasn't it? Um, Okay. Save that, and then we want that transformer. So that was Gatsby Transformer Remark. Oh. Transformer Remark. Let's install that using npm. There we go, nearly done. So this is what this plugin will allow us to transfer to translate the um the markdown into HTML or to JSON basically JSX. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we've got that. So what do we need to do with this? Okay, I don't think we need to do an awful lot of that. Let's just, for now, just not have all that config, because I don't understand what that config was all about. This one, I get. Um, I'll change that to files. So, cats the transformer mark. We can always come back and do a proper config if we need to. Um, that'll be a node called files available to us presumably in um, in GraphQL. So let's go and see what we can see in GraphQL. So let's start up Gatsby Developer, make sure there's no errors. In the source and transform nodes, which is good. In the development bundle is crossed, everything looks okay so far. Okay, we got a couple of warnings, but that's okay. That's just because we've got we haven't set up the links to our social media, which I must remember to do before we finish. So if I if I don't remember, someone remind me in, in chat, please, to set up the links to the social media. Okay, um, so that looks okay. So we should be able to go to our GraphQL now, and we should be able to. We got a file.
Did I call it file? I believe I did. Files. System. And maybe if I refresh this. Mm, all file. All markdown remark. That's silent. Okay, let's have a look at this. All down re all markdown remark. Edges. Mode. Ah, front matter. It should be right. This is our our remark module or uh, plugin. Mm. Have I got anything noted about what this is? Mm. Title CAD. Let's try that. Let's get rid of title. Um, that's it, that's it. And that. Ah. That's our front matter, isn't it there? Vital. Welcome. Date. That. Tags. Welcome. Okay. Well, this isn't that easy to use, is it? The, um, let's have a look. What else can we get at? So it should be an ID. ID. And that. We get a GUID ID, which is good because that, mean, that means we haven't got to, we got, uh, I'm going to worry about having um, non unique keys. We just learnt we need to have each of our um, iterated over elements within our page needs to have a key. Um, so in front matter, let's have title, let's not have any of these other things. I don't really even know what those are supposed to be all about. Some lot of Mipsum stuff, look. Interesting. Okay. seem to have all of our values in it is interesting um okay well that's fair enough we're getting something out of it aren't we so let's let's just stick with that for the moment um uh, 
What's in our markdown file? Play some oh, shall we? Title. Uh, I think I think this is actually YAML, you know, it's not what I think it is. This might be YAML, in which case we need to have colons in there. Um, let's try that. Um, we'll do a refresh. Yeah, we got welcome now, look. And we've got date and tag, so we want those date and tags. Okay, so it's YAML, not um, not a um, configuration style. Okay, well that's okay, that's good, we've got that. What we want to do now is we want to sort our query so it brings back things in descending um, calendar order. So let's have a look at the sort node here. And fields, um, we want front matter date and then we want to be able to see more of that um, and the order needs to be descending okay so if we run that it won't make any difference but it will mean that our most recent posts will be at the top and that's what we want we want to have the most recent post at the top of our list so this graphql query here now is defining um the data we're going to pull back from our file system to create our blog posts it's quite it's going to be the summaries of the blog posts um so let's uh, let's have a look at what, so we need to, to kind of keep on hold of that so let's close that for now close our markdown we need now a um a blogs blog posts component that's going to be a component so new file blog posts yes and we're going to have um it's going to be reacting and then we're going to have uh, const log posts and then other functional components which we may need to change to be a something else in a send um, export default log posts so we're going to want to have a query, aren't we? So it's going to be very similar to what we did uh, with projects. Let's, have a look at, let's go and examine what we did with projects. So to start, we brought in these items from Gatsby. So let's do the same for our blog posts component. Because we're going to need to use a static query. We're going to use this React hook to do that. Save that. So what else did we do? So we defined a, a constant like that. And then we had another constant within there, which was our data item and then we had um, and then we had a GraphQL query and then a return okay so let's do the same kind of thing um, I'm going to twitch between the two so we're going to have a const um, We'll just say data for now. That's going to equal and in projects that equals um, use static query and then the GraphQL and then the query itself. Okay. So use static query. We add it in brackets and then GraphQL. And then the query itself. So there'll be the back ticks, and return, and then return, 
and then I'm going to return my brackets again. Okay, so let's bring that down here. So let's go to our GraphQL. Let's grab this. Now, do we need the query? Yes, we do. The query and then the name of the query. there get post is going to be our query So what we did last time have been projects. We broke it down, didn't we? So it came comes back with GitHub, and so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to we're going to say this. So um, all markdown. nicely Russian expected okay <laughs> oh we need curly braces okay so rather than round braces we want to curly braces around the whole lot. Okay, so now we need to sort out our return statement. Let's save that's all at it. So that brings back edges. And then over in projects here what we did, we returned a div and then we stepped through um, we use this map here to Produce the um, card. So let's tell you what we're going to do. We'll just do the same kind of thing for now. So we'll say um, that put a div because that's what we do. And that should take all the errors away. Uh, and then over here we had a, a heading and then we had uh, the cards. Okay. We'll have a sorry, we'll have a div. Class name something. And inside here we're going to do um, edges. that and in here we're going to have node which is what we're extracting from our from our um, query here There we're going to write some JSX, and this is going to be a div. Like that. Okay, and this is going to be a card. So this is going to be um, UI cards, UI one cards. Uh, we'll see. Um, and then. 
We've got like horizontal cards, don't we? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we're going to have in here. This is going to be. Um, let's look at projects again. So we said it was a, a, a UI link card with a key. So we can do the same kind of thing. Um, class name equals UI link card. And the key is going to be easy in this case. So the key is going to be equal to, um, going to be node dot ID, I think it was. Node dot ID, there it is. Sir. And the text inside there is simply going to be excerpt node dot That's not the final thing because we're going we're going to want to have some kind of component to wrap up this um, the uh, the the article or the the post. Let's see what this is doing for us at the moment. Save that. Go over to our blog, and in here we're going to put in blog posts. Like that, and we'll bring in import blog posts on dot slash elements posts spelling terrible again So I'm using single quotes in this one. I must be consistent. Okay, save that. Does that compile okay? No, it's failed. Component blog posts. Components blog posts. Uh, Logs posts. Happy now? Yep. Okay. Let's have a look at how that might look. So we've got something. We've got a card there, one of these jiggly cards. And it's got a um it's got an excerpt in it. Okay. Well, okay. Let's just try and tidy a few things up before we do the next bit. So let's have a new file called blog post Um And what's that going to look like? We're going to want to have uh, import um react from that and we're going to want to import the else at the moment so we're going to want to have const log post Okay, so in here we've output a div as we do always do. Not make that go away. Okay, so let's save that. Uh, so in there we want to pass in. What do we want to pass in? In here we need to pass some properties in. So we can pass a props in. And that props will pass in ourselves in the uh, blog posts part of the component. Uh, in here, we want to have some kind of formatting, don't we? So, um, so let's ha let's use HTML5. So, article tag. Put in an article tag, um, the article class name is 
going to be um, UI card, UI card, and then the key is going to be props ID like that. We have some we we'll have some images, but let's keep it just text for the moment. Um, what else do we want to do? Um, we want to have um, in a card. We're going to have a div, a class name equals my header, and then it's going to be um, props dot title. Let's leave it at that for the moment. And go back to our blog post. And then here, we're going to, instead of doing that, we're going to bring in, so import blog post from slash. Blog posts, and in here, I'm going to wrap this nicely in a um, blog post component, and then we're going to pass some properties in. So um, ID is going to be um, node ID. Um, what did what did we use title was it title. and we'll pass in a title that's going to equal uh, node dot front matter title uh, what else can we pass in? Um, date equals node dot front date, and we can pass in tags equals node dot matter dot tags. We'll have some other things we'll pass in as well, but let's just that for the moment. Save and then over in our blog post. Oh, we want the excerpt as well. date and tags. We'll do the tags later. Okay, so we've got some basic information there. Save. What else could we do that we've learned? So one card, so he's raised. Raised link cards, we like those. Okay, well, did that compile? Lucky it was okay. Let's go and have a look at what it looks like. Thing. 
Ah, what have I done? So I've obviously missed something somewhere, so... The power's okay. Um... Blog post. Put blog post in. Now I've blogs. I'm putting blog post. Hmm. Nothing at all. Not even a header or footer. Um. Been a bit too clever for myself here. Let's have a let's go better. We've got blog posts there, and we've brought blog posts in. So a blog post consists of our query, and then we're outputting div. And for each each node, we run it, we are running this. The blog post in, we're passing in those props. Block post. We've got the props there. Ah, oh, from block post, not block posts. There we go. Let's give that a go. Fingers crossed. There we go. We have our card here. It's not looking particularly brilliant at the moment, but it's got at least basic information about our blog. So I wonder if... Um, I wonder if we get rid of those, what happens? So we still get this single... I'd like it to be kind of long. Um, that's probably a horizontal card. So let's go and have a quick look at horizontal cards before it's time to, f to finish. Okay, over here, cards. So these are the vertical cards that we've been using. So there was horizontal style cards. Grid cards, horizontal cards. UI horizontal card. So let's try that. Um, on blog post. Horizontal card. Yeah, so it's a bit a bit different. So there'll be an image underneath there. We need to lay out this stuff a bit better. That needs to be floated across to the right, doesn't it? That date. So let's have a look at that. So class name, UI header, metadata date. All right. Floated. And we'll we'll you know give you this up, make sure it make it look a lot nicer like we did with the other the other um, cards, but I didn't float it. Go and have a look at the horizontal cards here. So content. Oh, we had a content wrapper in it, and this and okay. So it looks like we want a content wrapper. Okay. So we need a content wrapper, and that's going to be description. Um, uh, 
that we had uh, content in the header. So I put a div around here. Content metadata floating. Try that. What else did we see on there? So they had also the meta was in the category. Try that. It needs to be underneath, doesn't it? The meta. Right. So just just say meta. <laughs> Let's get rid of the date bit for now. Oh, that's better. Okay. I wonder if we can make it wider. So we'll give it these some of these properties um, raised. Link card and then we'll take those properties off blog posts let's just have no uh, UI cards maybe and try that yeah so we've got a GD card nicely raised and we can apply some um, styling to that and let's have a quick look at uh, if we can have a nice icon for the just like we had for the um the projects we're to block under a blog post icon let's go and look at the icons and then probably ready to call it an evening i think um icon set month Um, so, animals, arrows, audio, video, computers, none of those look any good, social, got a blog, those is comment, Blog. Oh, it's quote, I suppose, isn't there? Maybe that's maybe that's what she use. Okay, I'll give that a go. Um, so the blog post, blah blah blah. ID node and the title is going to be that. So we pass it into blog post. This is going to be props title, and then it's going to be um, an icon, class name, course, and that would be um, quote left, was it? Quote left. Probably okay. I think what we'll do is um, we'll stop there because we've pretty much got the whole thing done. We just need to put a nice image next door to it. 
that will pop, push it across. We need some kind of random image. And then we want some. Um, oh, I know what we want. We want an author, don't we? Um, Okay, let's go for that. Let's see if we can do that. And then there must be an author um, with a, little, a nice little icon um, over here. So, uh, cards. Sure, I saw something. These are like blog posts, aren't they? There we got that. That's what we want. So what's that? So that was extra content. Let's just grab the whole of that in fact, extra content bit. And we'll drop that in description. Oops. Um, do that. So we've got those divs. name what's it complaining about here image That um, so that's a UAT. So we want to bring in a picture of me. Let's go and sort that out. Save that. Um, so over in my images, my pictures directory, I should have a picture of me. Um, I don't at the moment. So what we'll does you we'll have to use our um, code base alpha logo? So let's bring in. So over in the header, we bring that in. Let's just bring the same thing in really. into here. And I'll update it off stream with a picture of me. So this is going to be um, avatar here. Save that and have a look at what we got now. Yeah, that's great. So that's the start of our blog, which is uh, I'm pretty pleased with. So um, I think we'll save that to, we'll commit that and then save that up to our repo. Um, so just get add. So added logs page. And we'll push that up. Gareth, thank you very much for the subscription. Have some hype. Have some extra hype. Thank you so much for the subscription. That's great. Good to see you. I enjoyed your stream the other day. It was very, very good. Enjoy it when you do the F sharp. Have some, actually, you can have some extra special hype. Have some code base alpha -y hype. There you go. That's the latest shader that we, we built on the stream. So I'm going to push this up to. Um, up to GitHub now. What this will do, it will also kick off a um, a build on um, Netlify. Uh, yes, I'm glad you're sticking with F Sharp, Gareth, because it's it's interesting stuff. And I think the challenge of doing that DPU emulation in F Sharp would be absolutely un, um, un, 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 unmissable. I'd love to watch that. So I really hope you manage to get to do that at some point. Let's push that up. So that's available up on GitHub. Um, 
update if everyone's free to go there and have a look what I've done to grab the code to use it as they will claim it as their own I don't care uh, it's just there for community uh, use here's my github um, so anything you find on there um, if it's got an MIT license which virtually everything has you know, you're completely free to use for yourself um, I hope you enjoyed kind of me seeing me kind of learn this I'm very much in the learning mode on this front end stuff is simply not is not my thing at all so um, I'm really kind of challenging myself by doing this and I think this is the first string when things have gone pretty pretty kind of um, smoothly it just shows after about you know I think it was between five hours of on stream work that by after five hours of doing this you know I'm pretty much into the flow of w working with Gatsby uh, working with uh, Fermatic UI so that means that you know, if I can do that that means you can do that because I'm an old codger and you're probably your young, young dynamic individuals and can uh, and can learn these things a lot faster. But you know, it's it shows you your skills are transferable. Um, and thanks for Fermantic who who popped into the um, into the chat, a part of the stream. Really kind of pleased that you, you managed to make it. And uh, once again, well done on the uh, on the fantastic community work that's gone on on this uh, this framework. Okay, so um, that should be building on. Uh, on Netlify, let's see if it's built actually. HTTPS colon slash slash go base alpha dot dev. It's not quite there yet, so we'll leave that. And in the meantime, what I'll do is to uh, try and locate someone for us to um, raid. Gareth Hubble says, uh, Imagine me trying to do some front end stuff. Not a good idea. Well, it's not a good idea I do it either, Gareth, to be honest. You know, I'm not <laughs> I'm not um, a front-end developer. Um, as you can see, if I if you go over to uh, uh, compile soon. Um, there we go. I mean, that that's not exactly the most um, dynamic and, and wonderful of designs, but I like it, and it's what I like really gets at, at matters. Um, so I think that's I think it looks good. I like it. it. It's probably too busy for m many people, but I like all the um, the icons and the jiggly cards and all that and the buttons that attach to the bottom. So this is all done with um, Fermantic UI. Uh, so it's, it's kind of an equivalent to Bootstrap, really. But the, the you can do. I, I doubt very much so. So I'll see him. Griffin's uh, on as well. Well, we'll go and raid him, I think. Okay, let's go and do that. Uh, Okay, let's find him and we'll initiate a raid. Come on, there we go. Uh, raid channel. Yes, yeah, Sam Griffin is on. We'll go and raid him. So um, do stay with us for the raid um, and uh, en enjoy that. Otherwise, I'll see you again next Monday, I think it will be. I don't think I'm going to manage a Wednesday stream for a while. We'll see you next uh, Monday for some more uh, Gatsby JS and um, Fermantic UI and what we're going to do next time we're going to dynamically create the blog pages so that when you click on when you click on the uh, card it takes you to a full page which is just that blog post currently these are just like excerpts or just like um, a, a, a preview so we'll have a dynamically generated um, uh, pages for our blog which should be quite interesting so I'm going to start the raid now so thank you very much for joining and a good evening to everyone